This tutorial is for Excel Project 6. We're going to begin by opening up Microsoft Excel and it tells us we're going to use columns A through D for this spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and click in A1, turn your cap lock on, and key in Hollingsworth Mercantile. And then our subheading goes in cell A2, turn your cap lock off, and key in Serial Inventory. Then for our column headings, we'll start in cell A4 and do type, then press tab. In B4, we'll do units, tab, C4, cost, tab, and D4, total. Then we can go ahead and fill in the information for the items that we do have. Go ahead and key in everything that we're given. Uh, you can pause your video at this point and then start it again as soon as you're done keying everything in. Now that we're finished keying in our information, it tells us to use the internet to fill in the serial costs for the serials that don't already have a cost. So we're going to go ahead and go to the internet. Let's see if we can find an online grocery shopping. All right, let's use netgrocer.com. This should be one that we can all access. All right, we're going to search for cereal. So our first one is Wheaties. And press Enter. And we have two that come up. We have a smaller box and a larger box. We'll just use the pricing on the smaller box. So it says 539. Okay, to search for the next one, you'll just go back to your search line and we are looking for Cheerios. And again, we'll just use the smaller box that shows up at the top. And this one has 475. And then we'll do the same thing to find the pricing on the other two. Once those serial prices are all filled in, we need to go ahead and get our totals. In the past, we've used a sum to figure out our totals, but we want to know the total of 82 boxes of Honey Nut Cheerios. And obviously, if we did a sum and just did 82 plus 259, we're going to get $84.59. That's not the true value of 82 boxes of cereal. We need to use multiplication. To do that, we're going to put in an equals, click on the number of units, that gives us cell B5, then we're going to use the asterisk or a star, and click on the cost, which is C5. And then we'll do control enter and we get 212.38. We'll grab our little fill handle and drag down to fill in the totals the rest of the way down. Now across the bottom on our totals row, we want to find a total for column B and a total for column D. So we'll go ahead and click in column B. And for this one, we can do an auto sum. And then under column D, we're going to use our auto sum button as well. Now your value may be different because you may have found different pricing on cereal. So make sure you have correct formulas. You will have to turn in a version that shows me your formulas along with the regular one on this project. Now let's go ahead and format everything. So start with your main heading. Go ahead and format that correctly. 15 point bold and then we need to center it through column D. So we highlight A1 through D1, merge and center. Then our subheading we need to merge and center through column D. And then our column headings need to be underlined and centered. For our number formats, we are going to highlight the units column. Those need to be centered. And then we also want to turn on comma format. And to do that, we're going to go to the number group and click on the launcher. Then we are going to choose the category called number. Change the decimal places to zero and put a check mark next to use 1000 separator. We'll click on OK. Now it should all look the same except for our total. It should have added a comma to your total. For columns C and D, those need to be formatted to currency with two decimals. And they should also be right aligned. 
On our totals row, we need to add a single top and double bottom border, so we'll highlight from A18 over to D18, and we'll go up to our font group, click on our borders, drop down, choose top and double bottom border. We've done a lot of work right now. Let's go ahead and do a save as so we don't lose any of our work. Go to file and save as. Change to your student drive. In your computer tech Excel folder, we're going to name this project 6A. To finish things off, we're going to come down and we need to use four new functions in order to find out our four values that go below our table. Our first new formula that we need to learn is called the count formula. We're going to do that one next to number of serial types. So we'll click on that cell and we'll do equals count. And once you see it in the list, go ahead and double click on it. Now the thing about the count function is that it only works on cells with numbers. So we can't come here and highlight the names because they don't have numbers in it, so it would give us a zero. So we're going to use the units column instead, so B5 through B17. We do not want to use the total, that will make our number one greater than we want it to be. Add your closing parenthesis and you can press enter. Now it tells us we have 13 types of serial. Now you guys might say, well I can count to 13 a lot faster than I can do that formula. That may be the case, but let's say I get rid of three of my types of serial, I delete those cells, when you use a function it automatically updates the number down below. Let me get those serials back, we're back to 13. For the average, we're going to use a function called the average function. Now we can type in equals average, but I do want to show you that we can also come up to the editing group and here's our auto sum button. It has a drop down next to it. If I click on the drop down, it has the most commonly used or most recently used formulas and functions. And you'll notice that average is one of those here. So I can click on average and it gives me my opening and closing parenthesis. Now it's trying to guess what we want to average right now and it's looking for the first number above it. That's not where we want our average to be. We actually want it to be the average number of units. So we're going to highlight from B5 to B17 and then we can press enter. Next is our maximum units. This is where we can find the highest number in a list. So I'm going to do equals max this is our function, max for maximum, and then highlight our units and put in a closing parenthesis. So the highest number we have is 99, and then I'm sure you're already guessing ahead that to find the minimum units we do equals min, and then we can highlight B5 through B17, and our lowest value is 54. Let's go ahead and do control home and do a spell check, so press F7. Now Rice Krispies is going to stop, and this is one where I looked it up online and made sure we had it spelled correctly in our instructions, so we're going to ignore that one. And then fix any other errors that you may run into. We need to center horizontally and vertically on our page. We need to add our class header. We'll go ahead and save with the changes that we've made and then let's do a print preview. Oh, do you know what? We have not adjusted our column widths. I'm going to come back out, highlight my columns, and double click. That shrinks them down to where they need to be. Now if I do my print preview, things are looking a lot better here. All right, be sure to resave since we made some changes, and then we're going to convert this to a PDF. Go down to Save and Send, Create PDF, and keep it named Project 6A and click on Publish. Now I need to see your formulas for this to know that you use the new functions and all of the appropriate formulas. So you're going to hold down your control key and you're going to press the tilde button which is right above your tab key on your keyboard. It looks like a little squiggly. When we hold down 
control and press the tilde button, it converts everything to text. Now we do have to readjust our column widths after we've made that conversion. And then we are also going to go to File and Save As and change this name to 6B. Go ahead and convert this to a PDF. Keep the name as 6B. And then be sure you submit both 6A and 6B to Canvas.